Good afternoon, my name is Rebecca Mueller. I am the Interim Program Director for the Master of Physician Assistant Studies Program here at the Max Roddy College of Medicine, and I'm pleased to welcome all of you, students, parents, family and friends, all in person for the first time in two and a half years. So welcome to the MPAS Class of 2024 Inaugural Exercises and Stethoscope Ceremony. We will start out with the land acknowledgement taking a minute to acknowledge that both the University of Manitoba as well as the MPAS program and campuses are located on the original lands of the Ashinaabe Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories, we acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So again, I would like to say it's really great to be back in person for this celebration of this very important milestone to these 15 students. I feel honored to be here today welcoming each of you to the beginning of a new educational journey. This is a special moment for me and for you as you are the first class that I am welcoming into the MPAS program as the interim director. I am thrilled to go on this journey with you. In addition to that, we have several special guests joining us today, all of whom have had careers that notably impact patient care in Manitoba, the PA profession, and medical education at the University of Manitoba. With that, I would like to welcome Elder Margaret Lavallee, Angamasin Elder in Residence, Dr. Peter Nickerson, Dean of Max Roddy College of Medicine, Dean of Faculty of Health Sciences and Vice Provost, Dr. Ainsley Mihalchuk, Assistant Registrar, College of Physicians and Surgeons of Manitoba, Dr. Ian Wetter, Medical Director of Angamasin Health Services, and Mr. Steve Hall, Director of the Canadian Association of Physician Assistants. First up on our guest list would be uh, Elder Margaret Lavallee, and I invite her to come up and provide an opening prayer. Margaret Lavallee is a traditional Ojibwe Ikwi and elder in residence at Angamasin, the Indigenous Institute of Health and Healing in the Radiate Faculty of Health Sciences. She provides programming and support for Indigenous students enrolled in the health profession programs here, including medicine, dentistry, dental hygiene, pharmacy, nursing, rehab sciences, and of course, physician assistants. It is a privilege today to hear her wisdom and knowledge. Please join me in welcoming Elder Margaret Lavallee to give an opening prayer. I feel very tall. <laughs> In my other life, I'm going to ask for more height. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to congratulate all of you that are going to be the Physician Assistance Program for the next couple of years. And you will probably be training here. I, I imagine, right? So you'll see me from time to time, I hope. Bojo, Tansi, Anin, Ndiket, Minogi, Shigan, Kinoonche, Kenin, Gae. I say good day, beautiful day to all of you today. And in the next few days that you will be attending this university, I hope that you will all have a good time. It's beautiful to um, start your journey in this way, in a good way. With that, I want to do the, the prayer. Uh, Chantelle and I, were going to be taken off right after, so I, we can't stay for the whole ceremony. Um, there's other things that we have to attend to, like a picnic or something. Bonjour, Tansi, 
anin kai kitwan kishemal do atso kanak nem shom sinalek ne go komenalek e bugo seneme go ek kishemal do chimeno ganob mo ek go kawyo nakiyat chiganob mo at nimi janishna be menalek e bugo sen de man kishemal do chitu ta mo at I'm going to translate this. She do the chimbinogan of Mord Cab Matisik. I ask on our behalf, on your behalf, my behalf, and all of the good doctors that are here today. Uh, we ask the Great Spirit, the grandmothers, and the grandfathers and the sacred legend keepers who had gone on before us in the sacred is that you see. It's very important to have that respect for your patients. I have worked many years at HSC and I've seen some very good um, communications and good work with all of the healthcare providers. There has been some difficult times, but that's okay. We are in a journey of changing some, some issues that occurred. So this is why we have a lot of our indigenous people that work on behalf of patients that come to be in, in hospital. So I congratulate you and congratulate the parents and the friends that support you in this journey of healing. So my message to you is to make sure that you look after yourself as well, because that's very important. Um, to be able to look after others, you must do that in all instances. Um, I am available here. We have other elders here as well. If ever you want to m ask more questions or you just want to have coffee, that kind of thing, we can do that. So thank you very much for asking me to do the opening prayer or opening comments. So good luck in your journey, and we will see you from time to time. Miigwech, all my relations. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Lavalle. Now we'd like to invite our new Dean, Dr. Peter Nickerson, to bring greetings. He's a transplant nephrologist at the Health Science Center in Winnipeg and a medical consultant to Transplant Immunology Laboratory at Shared Health. Uh, he is a 1986 alumni of medicine and completed his postgraduate training in internal medicine and nephrology here as well, as, and did a postdoctoral fellowship in transplant research at Harvard Medical School. Internationally renowned in his field, Dean Nickerson worked uh, has worked significantly to enhance patients' access to transplants, reduce their risk of organ rejection, and improve their quality of life. He is a distinguished professor of internal medicine and immunology, served for the past seven years as vice dean of research, RADI faculty, and previously as associate dean research in medicine. He has a collaborative and collegial leadership style, strong knowledge of research, and a commitment to advancing interprofessional education, MPAS is honored to have Dean Nickerson with us today to speak to the MPAS class of 2024. Join me in welcoming Dean Nickerson. Thanks, Rebecca, uh, for the kind words of introduction. My, as I said, my mother would be very happy to hear the words, I'm sure. Well, congratulations uh, for being here. I've met uh, previous classes, and I'm always so impressed with the journeys that you've been on to get here. And I know that you're making a huge impact in the health system in Manitoba, so I'm sure you'll be hearing that from our other guests that are here today. But uh, we are very excited to have you and have you enroll in, in the program. After years of studies and work, the last few years of the COVID pandemic, you've achieved your goal of entering the competitive Masters of Physician Assistant Studies program, and you're now into the next phase of your academic journey. 
You faced a lot of challenges since the pandemic began in 2020, and your resiliency and adaptability uh, will serve you well in your chosen profession as you go from here. As a future healthcare provider, you will have the opportunity to serve our communities across the province and improve the quality of life and health of Manitobans with compassion, honesty, and integrity. The University of Manitoba Masters of Physician Assistant Studies program began in 2008, and after several years of our stakeholder input, discussion, and research on how best to educate physician assistants in Canada, Manitoba is the first province to recognize and regulate physician assistants in Canada. As Canada's first and only university-based master's level physician assistant program, we strive to offer a superior, higher learning experience. Over the next two years, you will gain new skills, strengthen ones that you already have, and learn from top-notch faculty members in your field. Our goal is to educate outstanding physician assistant clinicians as general medical providers and future leaders of the profession committed to service, wellness, and healing. We do so by teaching not just the knowledge of medicine, but the wisdom required for its use. And you heard a little bit about that from uh, Elder Lavely. And with a lens that encompasses health inequities in our province for indigenous populations and marginalized communities. You will graduate with your Master of Physician Assistant Studies degree from the U of M as medical professionals who think critically and reflectively and are aware of the social determinants of health and deliver equitable health care wherever your career may take you. Our University of Manitoba program, now starting its 15th year, involves over 200 instructors and preceptors and is part of a diverse global community of physician assistants. We aim for our learning outcomes to reflect the evolving profession of physician assistants and as part of the interprofessional health teams, and you will have heard that, we are an interprofessional health faculty and we put a real priority on the role and the value that everybody on the team has to play. We are comprised of the Max Rady College of Medicine, the Gerald Nisnik College of Dentistry, and the Colleges of Nursing, Pharmacy, and Rehab Sciences. We offer interdisciplinary collaboration opportunities amongst health professional and education, research, clinical practice, and community engagement. When I was Vice Dean Research of the faculty for the past seven years prior to being appointed Dean, I was always impressed by the rigor and the breadth of the PA students' research endeavors. The MPAS program's research is published in the Journal of Canada's Physician Assistants, sponsored by the University of Manitoba, and the students' capstones research projects are viewed globally. Interprofessional collaboration is an important focus of our dual campus of the Rady faculty, and the Rady Office of Interprofessional Collaboration brings together students from across all colleges to learn about, with, and from one another mirroring interprofessional healthcare teams in today's healthcare system. There's a growing evidence that healthcare professionals, when they work and learn together as part of an interdisciplinary team, actually it improves the quality of care and patient outcomes. And I have no doubt that you will be an exceptional representative of the Max Rady College of Medicine, Rady Faculty of Health Sciences, and your profession. We will help you navigate and support you in your journey towards in earning your master's degree in the Physician Assistant Studies at the University of Manitoba. I want to all congratulate you again as the uh, class of 2024 and those who have helped you along the way. And I want you to remember them and make time for them because they are going to be your support network as you go through the next two years. You'll have each other, you'll have the other students you'll meet across the professions, but your family and friends uh, make time for them. They will help you get through these next two years. And, um, and you'll be enriched for it. So the best of luck in your studies, and I wish you well. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Nickerson. So our next speaker is Dr. Ainsley Mihalchuk. She's Assistant Registrar in Quality with the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Manitoba and she plays a key role in our profession. She is a passionate advocate for patient safety and supporting continuous quality improvement within the medical profession. Dr. Mihalchuk is a family physician, providing patient care in the community, hospital, and long-term care settings, illustrating the impact we can make in responding to healthcare challenges in our province. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mihalchuk. Thank you, Rebecca, for that kind introduction. 
Dear Master of Physician Assistant Studies, Class of 2024, honored guests and family and friends. Uh, as I was been introduced, I am the Assistant Registrar of uh, Quality for the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Manitoba, and I'm here to bring greetings on behalf of the regulatory college to which you now belong. CPSM feels it's important to reiterate some comments uh, that have been made already, uh, but we believe that this is core to uh, our organization and we need to share this with you today. We wish to acknowledge that we are celebrating here today on Treaty 1 territory, the original lands of the Anishinaabe Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We acknowledge that our failure to honor and respect the treaties of this land has resulted in countless harms to Indigenous peoples. We also acknowledge that the medical profession, as well as CPSM, has contributed to the harms to Indigenous people, both past and present, including the perpetuation of systemic racism. We apologize for the harms that we have caused and are committed to building meaningful relationships with the Indigenous peoples of this province to advance truth, justice, and reconciliation in the medical profession and a future where anti-racist medical practice is the norm. It is a privilege to practice Western medicine on these lands and to serve the many diverse Indigenous peoples of Manitoba. It's an honour to have been asked to speak to you this afternoon as part of your inaugural exercises to celebrate the commencement of your educational program and entry into the medical profession. You've worked incredibly hard to achieve admission into this field of study and are about to embark on a journey of learning and growing to become practicing professionals who will have a measurable impact on the health and well-being of Manitobans. Congratulations on your accomplishments thus far and for being chosen to uphold the virtues of the medical profession, including compassion, honesty, humility, integrity, and prudence. Your patients will place great trust in you and that come, with that comes a great responsibility to live these virtues and to maintain the reputation of our profession. The public expects us to act always in their best interest, to strive to give the best care possible, and to be accountable and humble when we make mistakes. We must treat all patients equitably, honouring their intrinsic worth, protecting their dignity and respecting their autonomy. We must work to be conscious of our biases and to strive to always be better in all aspects of practice. We are grateful for the privilege of self-regulation, which means it is the responsibility of each and every one of us as registrants of CPSM to act ethically and professionally in the best interests of our patients and to provide safe quality care. We have endured a great deal in the past two and a half years in ways many of us could never imagine pre-March 2020, and we're only beginning to understand the trauma and grief of this period in our lives. The medical profession has been heroic in their contributions to the ongoing care of the population despite incredible challenges and for many personal sacrifice and loss. You come into the world of medicine at an immensely demanding time, uh, never have the challenges around human resources, care delivery, and access to resources and services been more evident. Never has the need for your help and support been greater, and never has the potential for your impact as physician assistants been more powerful. You have been chosen because you have what it takes to endure the uncertainty of these times and to integrate seamlessly into the larger team of healthcare professionals within the province, working tirelessly every day to do the best we can despite many challenges. You will advocate for your patients and you will be agents of change. You will be strong when your patients are weak and you will step up when you're needed to support your colleagues. But please know you will also need to stop and rest, to catch your breath, to deal with your own life and its ups and downs, to nurture your relationships with partners, family and friends, to celebrate your triumphs and comfort your feelings of defeat, to process the grief of losing your first patient and everyone after. In order to be everything you hope to be as a physician assistant, you will have to take care of you and do so regularly. One of the most powerful commitments you must make as part of the medical profession is to your own self-care and the maintenance of your health and well-being. Your patients, your colleagues, and those who love you will thank you for it. Today is an exciting day, as will be many more for you as you progress through your program over the coming two years. We wish you every success and hope you embrace the opportunities ahead to become an exceptional physician assistant and medical practitioner. Congratulations, welcome to the profession, and good luck. Thank you, Dr. Mihalchuk. 
Our next guest is Dr. Ian Wetter. He is a, um, the director for Angamasin Health Services. He's a family physician, an educator. He's co-lead of the Office of Community Engagement and the RADI faculty, and a member of the executive of PGME Truth and Reconciliation Working Group and the UGME Lead for Social Accountability. Dr. Wetter is an avid supporter of PAs. They work alongside him and the OHS team to break barriers by addressing the reality of ongoing colonial harms and confronting anti-indigenous racism and healthcare. This work is directly and immediately changing the health human resource landscape in northern Manitoba today. We're uh, glad to have Dr. Ian Wetter here with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rebecca, for that introduction, and thanks for having me here today. Uh, congratulations, all of you, class of 2024, on the long journey that got you here. It is a really big deal, and we're really happy to have you. Um, I'm bringing greetings on behalf of Angama Zin, the Indigenous Institute of Health and Healing. You'll see our banner up there. Uh, and uh, from Melanie McKinnon and Marsha Anderson, who is the head of our uh, institute. And I really want to speak to you about a few things uh, today. I want to speak to you about three really important features uh, that I saw some PAs that we developed a close relationship with over the past year in our response to the pandemic um, demonstrated really clearly. So the three PAs that I want to speak to directly um, are Tara Clark, Chris Barnes, and Lisa Moore. And those three PAs have joined our organization as part of our leadership team to try to deliver better care into northern Manitoba, and in particular in response to the pandemic. Um, there are a few features of the pandemic that have created a real problem for us. Oh, I'm just going to shut this off, excuse me. Um, one of them is, of course, uh, the widespread coronavirus. Uh, that was a big problem for us. But of course, the other is the mass resignation. And so I don't know if you know about this, but we are in a massive staffing crisis in northern Manitoba. Uh, we are down 60% of the nurses uh, in the northern nursing stations. And this summer, we would not have been able to keep the nursing stations of northern Manitoba open without the assistance of physician assistants. And so the three features that I want to talk about are truth, courage, and love. And you don't hear a lot about love when we talk about healthcare, but I really think we actually need to be talking more about love in healthcare. So the truth part is uh, really associated with um, what Margaret was talking about and what Dr. Mahalchuk was talking about, is that we need to acknowledge that the service that we're delivering to Indigenous people in Manitoba right now is not very good. Um, we have got a long way to go to meet the needs of the communities uh, that we are obligated to serve. And physician assistants are going to be a huge, important part of that service delivery. And so we can never look away from that truth. Um, we need to, when we see that people are receiving substandard care or are in conditions that really we, you wouldn't expect in one of the richest countries in the world, we can't look away from that. We can't ignore it. We have to stare it straight in the face and acknowledge the truth of that and acknowledge our own responsibilities in trying to address that. And that's where the courage part comes in. The fact that you are here and are entering the health workforce now as people are resigning in droves is a huge demonstration of courage. Uh, that is a real demonstration of your commitment to the idea that together we can make things better, and I think we can. And your PA colleagues, uh, Tara and Chris and Lisa, have for sure demonstrated that when we pull together as teams and we work together and we go to where we're needed and we step up in a big way, that we can actually shift the balance and the quality of care that people receive. And so you're going to be a part of that change, and that takes a lot of courage, uh, but it's also really meaningful, and I see a lot of hope uh, in your willingness to join us in this, uh, in this hard time right now. And then I think the last thing that I want to talk about is love. And that is, um, you know, when we meet patients who are at their most vulnerable, who are suffering and who are in need and they come to us, we need to meet them as though we are meeting our own parents, our own sisters, our own siblings, our own brothers, our own family in front of us. And we need to think, am I delivering the quality of care to this person that I would want my own family member to get? And if we hold that as our standard and we come at this from a place of love and we think about the parts of ourselves that make you unique, like what's the bit of you that makes you you, um, that all your friends would say, oh yeah, they're like this or they're like that. In your training, sometimes we train that out of people. 
and we train people to be a little bit robotic in the way that they deliver care. And I really want you, and Dr. Nickerson and Dr. Mahalchuk have already spoken to this, stay connected with your family, stay connected with your friends, and that little fire in your heart that's like why you're doing this, you have to hold on to that. Because that's where you're gonna meet your patients with love and empathy. You're gonna treat them like you would treat your own family. And we have hit a time where people in the health system are so frustrated that there's a lot of um, frustration that we're expressing to each other. And I think also that if we come at this with uh, love and support and encouragement for each other, for our colleagues in, in our departments, um, for people throughout the interprofessional team, uh, that together we're gonna make things better. And so you're coming into this profession in a hard time, but you really are the recruits. I don't know if any of you have played sports or been involved in something where you're down, your team's tired, you're feeling a little bit battered, and then suddenly someone comes up off the bench and they're fresh and they're energetic. You're the folks who are coming up off the bench. We need you now. Um, and so uh, it is a really great time for you to be joining us. And if you come at this work, don't look away from the truth. Um, bring the courage that you've brought to stepping into this field and hold on to that part of you that is that makes you you that essence of you and meet all of your patients as though they're family uh, you're going to do a great job so congratulations thank you so much for joining us um, you're going to have a great time in your training try very very hard in spite of all of the weight of this work to have fun in it because if we don't find joy in the work it's not sustainable so Congratulations, uh, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I, I expect to see you throughout your training and look forward to working alongside you when you're done. So, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Wetter. It is now my pleasure to invite Mr. Steve Hall, Director of the Manitoba Chapter of the Canadian Association of Physician Assistants, to bring his greetings. Mr. Hall began his career in healthcare in 2002 as an RN, working in a variety of acute care settings, and he graduated from the MPAS program in 2015. He currently works as a PA hospitalist at Concordia Hospital. Mr. Hall is involved with the PA program assisting learners as a preceptor on clinical rotations, as well as a guest lecturer on a variety of medical topics. He has also held a position as a member of the executive with the Physician and Clinical Assistants of Manitoba, or PCAM. Mr. Hall is most definitely a leader in Manitoba and across Canada amongst practicing PAs, and we are very pleased to have him join us today. Thanks for that introduction. Um, Good afternoon. Greetings to everyone in attendance, especially the class of 2014. It is a privilege and an honor to be sharing this moment with you here today. I'm going to adjust this a little bit here. My name is Stephen Hall, MPAS graduate from 2015, practicing PA in hospitalist medicine at Concordia Hospital and currently the Manitoba Director for the Canadian Association of Physician Assistants. Um, having previously applied to the program three times, I suspect it was fine time to mix in an older demographic and I was finally admitted to the program. As a forewarning, prior to beginning my studies in 2013, I had a full head of hair. <laughs> Class of 2024, each of you have had your own unique path which, was brought, which has brought you here today. Whatever path you may have taken to get to this point, you are one of a very exclusive few who were selected for admission, not an easy task. You should be proud of your hard work and perseverance. Let me congratulate you. However, your work is not done. There will be many times over the next two years when you are frustrated, exhausted, and discouraged. Times where you may even question your decision to enter the program. My hope is that when these times occur, and they will, that you remember these two words. Embrace discomfort. Generally something we all strive to avoid, discomfort has its purpose. Putting ourselves in situations that are new and unfamiliar challenges us, provokes us, and helps motivate us. Discomfort helps build character and give life meaning. Growth occurs outside of our comfort zones, and that is why I say embrace discomfort. 
A few weeks ago, my son and I were trail running in Riding Mountain National Park. It was hot and humid, and we had spent several hours out on the trails. We were exhausted and spent. For our last run for the day, I had pictured a sunny skied, breezy run to cap it off, but it was not to be. As soon as we started off at the trailhead, the skies opened up and it absolutely downpoured. As people ran for their vehicles and cover, we continued on, drenched from the ongoing rain, slipping and sliding in mud, losing our footing and crashing into trees at times, lightning and thunder booming around us. When we were done, my son and I looked at each other, grinned and said, well, that was unpleasant. And although in truth it was, in many ways, we also had a greater sense of satisfaction in achieving our goal and doing what we set out to do despite obstacles. That also makes for a much better story. You will also have a great deal of those. The upcoming two years will have plenty of opportunities to dig into discomfort. I encourage you to explore those opportunities and allow them to move you forward, to move our profession forward. Encourage one another. Support one another. Lift each other up. We are a small but mighty group vital to our healthcare system. I look forward to watching you all help us grow. Psychiat Psychiatrist M. Scott Peck said, the truth is that our finer, finest moments are most likely to occur when we are feeling deeply uncomfortable, unhappy, or unfulfilled. For it is only in such moments, propelled by our discomfort, that we are likely to step out of our ruts and start searching for different ways or truer answers. Thank you for asking me to speak. Thank you, Steve. Thank you to all of our guests that we had today for taking their time to impart your wisdom and inspiration to the class of 2024. Um, I want to acknowledge the great support that we received from the Department of Family Medicine, Max Reddy College of Medicine, and the Faculty of Graduate Studies, both of whom contribute greatly to our program's success. And the fact that you are here today um, is, uh, hey, that's not the right, I apologize. I knew I was gonna do that, okay. So thank you to all of you for coming here today. It's very much appreciated. And to the class of 2024, congratulations on making it here. The fact that you are here is evidence that you have already overcome obstacles, led lives of high academic standards, community engagement, and hard work. The admissions rate of the MPAS program is around 10%. So as you know, this is a very competitive program to get in. Your applications, statements of intent, recommendation letters, and interviews were all reviewed at great length and in depth. Significant consideration was given to every single applicant, and you are the final 15. So after that, be confident and know that you deserve to be here. You are qualified to be here. The next two years are going to be challenging, as you have heard many of the speakers acknowledge and demonstrate. The vast amount of content and fast pace of the program will be more demanding and taxing than you can really predict or prepare for today. Medicine will become your life, nearly all consuming. There will be days that you feel defeated, so remember to sleep, remember to eat, and don't underestimate the import importance of finding joy and amusement even in the small things. That is evident by the speakers, as every single one of us here today has mentioned the importance and need to put yourself first. And to add another quote to the mix, Winston Churchill, back to my American roots, said, you cannot deal with the most serious things in the world unless you also understand the most amusing. So find the joy and the laughter in the small things. Take a conscious practice to achieve this because it will become difficult at times and you will need to fall back on it. You will begin to see patients in your second term, in your early clinical experience course. This is a time to observe, practice taking a history, present the information gathered to an attending and begin to gain insight into the nuances and art of medicine as you transition into clinical rotations in second year. 
Although you are there to learn, it is of utmost importance to understand your limitations, keep patients safe, and prioritize their autonomy and healthcare goals. For the patients we serve, their days are anything but normal. Rather, their days are filled with uncertainty and the stress of not only managing their own health, but also the, the well-being of those who depend on them. It is inadequate to solely bring to the bedside medical technology training and standards of practice. I will echo what others have said here today. You must also bring your humanity, your compassion, your concern, and your understanding. Healthcare outcomes are heavily impacted by the social determinants of health and not simply by the science of medicine. The responsibility of addressing inequities in healthcare and addressing anti racism within healthcare falls upon all of us, including you. We must be willing to be held accountable for our actions or our inactions and hold healthcare in Manitoba and across Canada to a higher standard. As you begin your new journey, step out of your comfort zone because mistakes will happen. Embrace them, be brave, ask questions. This is where true growth and learning will occur. And with all of that, you will have the power to create change. So to recognize and induct each member of the class of 2024, we distinguish entering learners with the stethoscope ceremony. Receiving your first stethoscope serves as a milestone in the life of every PA student and symbolizes the journey that you are beginning and that the most important part of healthcare is listening to the patient. The stethoscope, however, is only useful when there is communication between the medical practitioner and the patient, where the practitioner must first and foremost listen with intent. To start us off with the stethoscope ceremony, we will together read the physician's oath, which you should all have in your chair and, or print it on your program. After the oath, I will call each of you by name to the stage along with a brief description of your history. Upon entering the stage, you'll enter over here. You'll come over here where Dr. Peter Nickerson will drape you with a stethoscope and Steve Hall will hand you a collection of books. Okay, so to start with the physician's oath. As a member of the medical profession, oh wait, first, I would like you to stand. Please stand. And turn around and face the loved ones that are here with you today supporting you so that you are taking the oath in front of them. As a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patient has died. I will practice my profession with concise, conscious and dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, colleagues and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of healthcare. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Thank you. And if I could have uh, Dean Nickerson and Steve Hall to the stage, please.
First up is Lauren Barrington. Lauren is from Halifax. She volunteered at Health Sciences Centre in Halifax and long-term care home in Antogonash. Oh, I said that city wrong for sure. She assisted with speech therapy for a recovering stroke patient, geriatric physiotherapy, and companionship with patients receiving cancer treatment. Lauren has been a competitive volleyball player and figure skater, as well as a coach. Pierre Bosque. Pierre was born and raised in Winnipeg and is fluent in both French and English. He has been working as a private practice physiotherapist at Pan Am Rehab Services, located in the Pan Am Clinic since 2016. Throughout his career, he volunteered at a variety of sports teams and sporting events. Pierre enjoys living an active lifestyle, including hockey, hiking, and kayaking. Daniela Castro. Daniela was born in the Philippines and moved to Winnipeg where she graduated with honors with her degree in psychology at the University of Manitoba. She has volunteered at the Children's Hospital Let's Talk Science and has worked at an inner city school working with youth immigrants and refugees. She enjoys spending time with her family, photography, cooking, and hiking. Thank you, Daniela. Jillian Furness. Jillian grew up in Stonewall, Manitoba and moved to Winnipeg where she obtained an advanced bachelor's degree with a major in anthropology and a minor in psychology. Throughout her undergraduate degree, she worked as an optometrist assistant and volunteered in various roles in hospitals and homeless shelters. Jillian plays the piano, bakes, gardens, and is learning to play golf. Olivia Gessner. Olivia was born and raised in Car Carberry, Manitoba, on a potato farm. Carberry, I think I got that right. She moved to Winnipeg, where she studied at the University of Manitoba and obtained her Bachelor of Science with distinction in genetics. Olivia worked on an agricultural research team for the past six years and has been involved in team sports such as softball, basketball, and volleyball. Sarah Gunther. Sarah was born and raised in Winnipeg, Manitoba. While obtaining her undergraduate degree in neuroscience, she volunteered at St. Amant and supported individuals from the community with disabilities. Sarah enjoys traveling and has backpacked across Southeast Asia and Europe. Trevina Hanna. Trevina was born in Egypt and raised in Canada. She graduated at the top of her class from the University of Winnipeg with her undergraduate degree in psychology. She at, um, is at working at Children's Hospital as a pharmacy technician and provides care for rural communities. Trevina enjoys reading, cross-stitching, and spending time with her orange tabby cat. Catherine Hunt. Catherine was born and raised in Brandon, Manitoba, and graduated from Brandon University with her Bachelor's of Science, with a major in Biomedical Sciences and a double major in Chemistry and Psychology. She has spent three years researching entomology-based topics, leading her to be a co-author in several published papers. She volunteers at the Brandon Huddle Youth Wellness Hub and enjoys baking, hiking, and yoga. Humera Patel. Humera was born in Malawi and moved to Toronto where she graduated with honors and a Bachelor of Science degree specializing in neuroscience and minored in psychology and biology. She has volunteered at a retirement home, a primary care clinic, and a crisis line in her community. She has also been involved at a Parkinson's research lab and has recently published a review article on neurodegenerative diseases. She enjoys hiking, photography, biking, and digital art. Uh, Raylin Plowman. Raylin was born and raised near Brandon, Manitoba and graduated from Brandon with her Bachelor's of Science in Psychology. She worked at the Brandon Hospital as both a surgical and dietary aide and during the COVID-19 pandemic found a job at the immunization clinic in Brandon. Raylin enjoys traveling, crafting pottery and recently completed a solo backpacking trip across Europe. Let's see, did I miss somebody? Is that why, did I screw up the order? I'm sorry, I'm looking over at the order and I think I have miss, missed it up. Hmm? Mackenzie. Mackenzie? Okay, thank you. Mackenzie Kozak? Sorry about the order. Okay, Mackenzie grew up in Roblin, Manitoba where she continues to remain active with the family farm and community. At age 13, she represented her peers in a book published by the Dove, Self-Esteem Project. 
and Mackenzie completed her undergraduate degree at Mount Royal University in Calgary, while also volunteering at CUPS in their homeless shelter and the medical clinic, along with working with special needs children on physical literacy. Mackenzie enjoys curling, volleyball, dancing, and traveling. Janithra Muhandaram. Janithra studies psychology and biology at the University of Manitoba. She volunteered at the Victoria General Hospital where she spent time with geriatric patients by organizing and participating in recreational activities. Janithra is a member at St. John's Ambulance Team and has participated at various public events providing first aid. She enjoys traveling with loved ones and is an avid dancer and performer. Carrie Rotz. Carrie is from Winnipeg and studied at the University of Manitoba and Red River College, completing her degree in human nutrition science and a medical laboratory science diploma. She has been working as a medical laboratory technologist for several years and enjoys running, camping, hiking, and boating. She is also an avid Winnipeg Jets fan. Chelsea Witt. Chelsea is from Rosser, Manitoba and completed her bachelor's of science degree at the University of Manitoba. She has volunteered at Active Minds and worked at a, as a healthcare aide in the emergency department in ICU at the Grace Hospital. Chelsea is excited to translate her skills to advocate and support her patients, as well as ensuring mental health is addressed while providing patient care. Ariana Zamansky. Ariana, who was born and raised in Winnipeg, she completed her undergraduate degree with a bachelor's of kinesiology, minor in recreation, and a concentration in aging. She received an undergraduate research award in 2021 and became a research assistant later that year. Ariana has a, was a competitive dancer and rugby player, and she also loves to travel and experience other cultures. So thank you, um, to Dean Nickerson and Steve Hall, for presenting to the students. Thank you to all the students for coming up here. You now have your stethoscopes. Welcome. Thank you to the friends and families and supporters of the incoming class in attendance today, both in person and anyone who's attending virtually as well. Your presence is of the utmost importance. I would like to take just a moment to recognize those who worked tirelessly today and leading up to today to prepare for your arrival and this event. Janessa Grabsky. Darlene Lucier. I'd also like to thank the rest of the MPAS team, including uh, Denny Piernat, where he, there he is out there. Alana Simon and the communications team, communication and marketing team for helping us out today. I'd also like to thank our photographer, Mike. Where did Mike go? There you are in the back there. The AB team and physical plant who also helped set up today. Of note, there are some refreshments available in the John Bueller atrium. So just down this way, is there, are there signs? There are no signs, so we'll lead you and you won't get lost. So in closing, I'm going to attempt to say congratulations to you uh, as best I can. I really am excited to work with all 15 of you as I know the rest of the MPAS team is. You have worked very hard to get here and will continue to work hard in your time here. So congratulations and welcome to the class of 2024. Felicitacion y bienvenue to the class of 2024. And in my home uh, language, felicitaciones y bienvenidos a la clase de 2024. Amigo, which enjoy the afternoon.